It is very special to be here tonight. To be able to talk together and schmooze a little bit about, about the situations that we're in. Let me tell you a story. Listen to this story. The story happened about 150 years ago. There was a Shiva by the name of Rebeirish Meisels. Rebeirish Meisels had a yeshiva that was unique. It was a yeshiva of a uh, hundred bochrim. But he was a businessman. And he didn't have to go around collecting any money. Halavayef Megazot. He didn't have to go around. He was in the lumber business. He used to go to the forest, chop down the trees, and they would send the trees down the river. And that's how it was in, in Europe, from Western Europe to Eastern Europe. There were a lot of trees in Eastern Europe. There weren't so many trees in Western Europe. And that's, how he made a biz- and that's how he made a living. And he made so much money that he was able to have a yeshiva. And he, and he was able to support the yeshiva. Business was good. And like some of us know, when business is good, you try to for business to get better. Supply and demand. He knew that in Western Europe, there's a big need for wood. So he decided, you know, once and for all, I'm going to go to the bank. I'm going to borrow money. A lot of money. I'm going to hire three or four ships. We're going to cut down all of the trees in the forest and we're going to load up the ships and we're going to send the ships down the river and I'm going to make a lot of money and for that I'll have money for the yeshiva for who knows how many years I'll have money for my, for my family for my enoklach, my grandchildren and great grandchildren it's going to be great and that was the plan now it wasn't so easy to borrow money for the the Tsar in Russia, it wasn't easy at all. He borrowed the money. He hires the people in the summer. They cut down the trees. He puts it on the ships. One day, someone walks into the yeshiva and says, you know, the Rosh Yeshiva's ships sank. All three ships. Someone has to tell him busy uh, tumbling around, they're busy talking. Who's going to tell the Rosh Shiva? One of the Magide Shurim, one of the, one of the people there say, whoever's going to tell the Rosh Shiva that the ship sank should be a smart person. Anyway, they select a bocher, a young person to go and tell the Rosh Shiva this terrible news. Walks over to the, to the Rosh Shiva's house, knocks on the door, Asked the Rosh Shiva, said, Rebbe, can I walk in? Yeah, please, come in. Sit down, what's your problem? He says, I don't understand something. The Mishnah says at the end of Brachis, Kishem Shemavarachim ala Toiv, Kach Mavarachim ala Ra. Same way you make a bracha on things that are good, you have to make a bracha on things that are not so good. Dayan Oemis. I don't understand it. Explain it to me. So the Rashiva says, well, What don't you understand? There's a Kaddish Baruch in the world. A Kaddish Baruch gives us good things. A Kaddish, gives us, a Kaddish Baruch gives us what we think is not such good things. And you've got to make a bracha. So, Rebbe, I don't understand it. So, what don't you understand about it? This is how Hashem runs the world. Two plus two equals four. He said, Rebbe, do I have to be happy about it? Of course you have to be happy about it. So how happy do I have to be if something bad is going to happen? What do you mean? You have to be very besimcha. As besimcha as the Rebbe was last week when he married off his daughter? Thinks for a second. Yeah, perhaps. Should I dance? Like the Rebbe danced? To marry off his daughter? Yeah, 
כשם שמבורכים על הרע, על הטוב כך מבורכים על הרע, we have to dance. The Talmud, the student looks at the Rebbe and says, Rebbe, hey, bon tansen. Rebbe Rish understood exactly what he meant. Hey, bon tansen. All three ships sank. He faints. The Talmud goes and gets a cup of water and pours it on the Rebbe's head. And then he wakes up and the Rebbe says, I also don't understand it now. Sometimes in life things happen that we don't understand. And sometimes in life things happen that perhaps we should dance. Just we don't understand how to dance at that time. This week's Pasha is the Pasha of illness. The Gemara says in Bab Metzia, in Sanhedrin, that the, fir- that the first time that it mentions, the first time there was sickness in the world, was the sickness of Yaakov Avinu. That was the sickness. And in fact, the Gemara says that Yaakov Avinu was mispalel, he davin to Hashem, that there should be a thing called sickness in order for him to talk to his children about what should be in the future. Tzaddik says, the first time anything's mentioned in the Torah, that's the Makar. So this week's parasha is the makar of how to deal with illness. How did Yaakov deal with illness? How did he deal with it? What did he do? Something happened in his family that no one knew about. Ephraim and Menashe had to tell it to Yosef. In the Choyla, he didn't know what illness was. He never got a diagnosis. I don't have to tell anyone in this room what a diagnosis means. There's not a single person sitting in this room that doesn't remember the day, the hour, the minute that their diagnosis happened. So how did Yaakov Avinu deal with the illness? The first thing we, the Torah teaches us is that he dealt with it. He said, I am sick to his children. He dealt with it. Because illness has to be dealt with. The second thing he did is he brought all the Shvatim together, all of his children together around, around the table. And he said, Yehuda, you deal with it this way. Shimon and Levi, you deal with it that way. Because every child and every family member is different. Everybody has to deal with it differently. Everyone has to deal with it, but you have to deal with it differently. And that's probably one of the most, the greatest challenge that we have as parents. Dealing with every part of our family differently. Busy with a sick child, busy with the other children in the family, busy with life's challenges, it's difficult. How do we do it? Well, Chai Lifeline is here, we're a family, we we do it together, we try. But there's a Pasuk in in Mishlei. The Pasuk says, Ruach ish yechalkel machlehu. And the Slonim Rebbe touches up as follows. You want to defeat an illness? You want to defeat it? Ruach Ish. The Mechazik in the Ruach Ish. It's not just giving children a good time. That's also important. So we have the Mechazik in ourselves, the Ruach Ish. We need Chizik ourselves. We have to strengthen ourselves. Simcha is hasameach b'chelkoi sometimes. To understand that our Kodesh Baruch Hu is with us in every part of our life. 
we have to be mechazek ourselves. And sometimes we're mechazek ourselves by coming together like this, or by talking to people, by talking to others. We're mechazek ourselves, we strengthen ourselves. Because when we're together as one, then it becomes a little bit easier to deal with what we have to deal with. I always say, the end of the tunnel, the light at the end of the tunnel, that's up to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. What will be the end of our journey? Who knows? HaKadosh Baruch Hu knows. He's the one that took us there, and we have Betochen, al Kanfei Nisharim, that we're going to fly there. To the light at the end of the tunnel. What could we do at Chai Lifelong? What could we do at Achim Biachat? What could we do together as a Chevra? We can give you the light in the middle of the tunnel to get through the tunnel. And that's the importance of these gatherings, which Baruch Hashem, Hershey Katz, and his Chevra, and together with everybody else at Chai Lifeline, how, how, how much they do for everyone. As the Goldschmidt is here, I know from Columbia, and, and, and Rachel Goldberg is here from Memorial, and, 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 and the various different, all the other volunteers that are here. It's, it's, we're together, together to give the candle. 